right, last minute episode we're going to try to shoot. Mandy had a great idea to come down to Lake Taboo. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did the uh, Sutter Creek shoot, which was awesome. As we're walking around, I don't really see anything hitting the surface. There's a lot of dragonflies and whatnot, but nothing to really jump up for them. So we were pretty much deciding not to do it. And then I just saw like a two foot fish right off the shore here. Yes, but we also have these ducks that won't leave us alone, so they're kind of scaring the fish away. But I'm going to throw from the shore right here behind us. We're going to see if we can see anything worth a shot. Lake Taboo, Pine Grove. Pine Grove. Pine Grove, which is what? Northeast of Jackson? Southeast? Uh, east, east? East, yeah, pretty much east. East, east, yeah, east of Jackson, north. California. Yeah, They're true aquatic plants, but there's a ground covering of uh, freshwater plants and kind of grasses going on here. It's like a planted aquarium. Uh, so I'm just going to get some good footage right here. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh yeah, they're all coming. They were coming in. Yeah. Right the camera. This is going to be cool footage. I bet no one else has shot 10 minutes of underwater footage at uh, Lake Taboo and Pine Grove. So we'll have a cool record of at least these small fish. But the bottom topography right out here drops off. Looks like it gets about four or five feet deep, maybe about 15 feet out. And there was a golden fish about yay big. So it could have been a carp, could have been a California sucker fish, could have been a squaw fish, uh, some kind of big minnow you know, like Hardhead, which I saw in Gualala. Another point about this lake is that it is a reservoir. So it's probably supplying some kind of drinking supply, right, water supply yeah. in the area. So there's no swimming, um, which is a bummer because the first thing I thought as soon as we walked down here was kind of go scuba diving in it. Um, but that's obviously off limits. Um, there was no signs specifically saying to not drop cameras from the shore though. So I think I'm good. They're skittish though. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're seeing me lift my arm from the shore and it's spooking them. Not a lot of people probably come down here. All right, so like I was saying, most of the vegetation here on the bottom just appears to be the terrestrial plant life that you know the reservoir is filling up and, and covering which is doing fine. It looks like it's actually thriving in the water for however long it gets submerged. But I do see some true aquatic species. It looks like almost like an anacris growing right in front of the camera here. So that's gonna be in the shot. And it'd be really cool to try to figure out what that is exactly um, for all my freshwater plant aquarium geeks. I imagine this water's super cold though. I'm gonna test that theory. Yep. I mean, it's, not, it's not deathly cold, but you could swim in it, but it would be startling. Probably a little snow runoff, maybe? Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to try to get it further out there, get a better view of that deep end.
After watching almost 10 minutes of exactly what you see here, clear blue water with barely a minnow swimming by, finally, something big appeared on the screen. Without a doubt, this is what I saw from shore when we first walked up, a long golden colored fish. Even at a distance, I could tell that this was easily the largest fish we've seen yet on the channel. Once it slowly swam off into the distance, after a couple of minutes, another one of these long lake giants popped into view as well. If you look closely, you can see that this fish seemed to attract a smaller friend, which hurriedly followed it out of view. Though these fish are far off, if you're an avid angler, you know exactly what species this is already. I got it out there pretty far, pretty much the full length of the rope, and there's the camera. Really hoping I got one of those big fish to come across and give me a minute so I can identify it. Just a couple seconds, really. All I need is up in front of it right now. Look at a pile of rocks right there. After almost another 10 minutes of no activity, I spotted this silvery glimmer in the upper right hand corner. It looked just like that smaller fish that was tagging along earlier. When trying to identify a fish, you almost always start by looking at the fins. How many are there? What shape are they? And where are they positioned on the fish's body? With that info alone, you can really narrow it down to a few possibilities. Luckily for us, the incredible coloring on this fish, combined with the clearly visible fins, seals the deal. This is none other than the legendary brown trout. This fish is actually native to Europe, Western Asia, and North Africa, not the United States. But in the mid to late 1800s, it was introduced in many places around the world, from North America to Australia, simply for the sake of recreational fishing. So what makes this fish so special for anglers? Brown trout are smart and picky. They don't attack every lure or fly dropped in front of them like many other trout do. This means they're much more challenging to catch, which also means they tend to live long lives and get really, really big. The reigning world record fish since 2013 was just over 42 pounds. But in 2020, a 44.3 pound fish was caught by a fisherman who prefers to stay anonymous. Both of these fish were caught in the same spillway in New Zealand. All right, we're gonna bring it up. That pretty much wraps up the Pine Grove Taboo Lake episode, short and sweet. I feel like if I got five minutes of beautiful footage of all those minnows just continuously swimming past the camera, that's enough for me. That was like a full on freshwater aquarium scene right here in the wild. We don't know what's on the, the big camera out here. Hopefully a big fish. Hit that notification bell. All right. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, please. So I can, you know, be encouraged to keep exploring lakes like this and bringing you along virtually. Yes. Help you get outside virtually. That freshwater plant that I was talking about earlier that was right in front of the camera, I happened to perfectly snag it. So I don't know exactly what species this is. It's kind of like a anacurus, which we would have in the aquarium trade, um, which would also thrive in colder waters. So this might be really similar to that. If it's not, ugh, I'm getting attacked by bugs. If it's not literally an anacurus, um, it's something similar, but it's definitely a branching stem plant. Actually, you call this a stem plant in the aquarium trade. So, pretty cool. Nice to see that there's actual real aquatic freshwater plants growing in this lake. I'm not surprised, it's so clear. Um, conditions are great. So, anyway, for, for the plant nerds.